Hello, welcome to this special reading for all of these retrogrades we find ourselves in. Holy smokes. I think it's really fitting today. It is kind of a dark, dreary, little cold day here in New Hampshire. So it felt like a good day to be by the fire, hearing the crackling of that inner fire within us. All of these retrogrades are really calling us to go within. This is a wonderful opportunity. We have not had this many planets. There's five retrograde planets. We have not had this many retrograde in 10 years. So it's a rare opportunity where the energies are really backed off. Now I wanna talk for a minute about what a retrograde really means. Um, it's more of a visual illusion that happens. Um, the planet doesn't actually go backwards, but it appears that it does. Um, so it, basically think about if a friend was standing next to you and you, your friend walked ahead and then you started walking at a faster pace and overtook where your friend was at, it would almost appear as though your friend was moving backwards when really they're continuing to move forward. It's just your pace is faster and that backwards motion that appears um, is really just a, an illusion. It's that they're going at a slower pace. And that's what happens as the Earth in its rotation approaches these planets, which they have a much slower rotation around the sun in most cases. Um, as, as the Earth goes around, there comes a point where it almost looks like you're looking back at these planets because you're overtaking them on, from our perspective on Earth, you're overtaking them and you're continuing to move ahead. And they are too, but their pace is a little different. So it, they call that a retrograde though. Basically what it means is it's a time of re, R-E, reflect, review, reconsider, um, rejuvenate. I really want to say that one the most because I think that's what this is all about. So we have Mercury that just went retrograde on the 29th. That is retrograde until May 23rd. Mercury is all about our communication, uh, use of technology, um, how we use our brain. Um, very powerful planet. Mars is started retrograde on uh, April 18th and it will be retrograde through June 30th. Mars is all about our masculine energy. It's getting stuff done. It's very forward movement, can be quite um, lively and fiery at times, um, but very much masculine forward movement. It's taking action in our lives. Let's see, Jupiter. Jupiter um, has been retrograde since January 8th and it will be through May 10th. So we're almost through with Jupiter retrograde. Um, I'm loving that when that goes direct Jupiter is all about our expansion so it's important um, that we're taking this time to really think about what will expand us because once it goes direct again I use that term loosely because it never stops moving forward but it stations meaning it stops at its place in the sky and then it moves ahead on May 10th so we're really in the last uh, stretch of trying to figure out that expansion piece of the puzzle. Also, Saturn is retrograde, started its retrograde pattern on March 25th and going through August 13th. Saturn is a tough one. It's like going to the principal's office. As I learned through the uh, Deborah Silverman course, I like her description of that. It's like the taskmaster. It's the one who that inner voice that says, you know, this is what you really need. Like, let's get down to it and you need to do this. And it's like that strict disciplinarian in our lives. Okay. So we're getting a break from that. No trips to the principal's office right now. Then Pluto is also retrograde. It started its pattern on April 18th going through September 27th. Pluto is about transformation, rebirth, um, you name it. I mean, it's, it's the most um, deep, I would say, of the planets. Even though it's small 
in size, it is power packed. This is the energy that changes your life. It changes the course of your path. So you see all that retrograde action is going on and that's causing us to go within, to reflect, to reconsider how we communicate, how do we want to take action to move forward? How do we want to expand ourselves? And we're on limited time on that one. Um, and how do we want to discipline ourselves in moving forward? Because there's nothing wrong with discipline in a schedule in order to make your dreams come true, in order to accomplish the things you want in all areas of your life. Um, that also is, we're really reflecting and refining that too. And then Pluto, I mean, really thinking about how do we want to reinvigorate our entire life? This is the year for it. This is a very rare occurrence to have this much planetary action going, er, pulling back, not shining its direct energy at us no massive income of energy on that. So it's our chance to reflect and um, review all of these aspects of life. Now, when I tapped in for, for those that are taking part in this reading, um, I wanted to have a Sabian symbol that gives us an idea of what is it that, um, that all of these planets, what's the energy that's going on right here, right now, as we sit with five planets in retrograde. And they, the, your teams led me to Leo 21. Listen to this one. Intoxicated chickens dizzily flapping their wings trying to fly. There is a whole lot of ideas out there. There's a whole lot of crazy communication. We don't know what's going on with our uh, election you know, process that's gonna occur later this year. Everybody's in this, the crazy chicken syndrome, I wanna call it. Um, and there's a real chance to like stop, stop the madness and let's get our head together as an individual being. The people listening and wanting to take part in this reading, there's a part of you that wants to contribute to a really solid, grounded approach and holding your light, more importantly, even so, holding your integrity, being really clear about what your place in this world is about, and all of that matters. All of it matters, okay? So that's what we're at with the, uh, with the energy. Where does the stability come? That was my next question in terms of a Sabian symbol. If the, we've got crazy chicken syndrome going on, what is what are we being called to uh, bring forward in ourselves to add some stability to this crazy picture that seems to be shaping up? And I was led to Gemini 3. Gemini 3 is the charming court. Boy, I can't even read my own writing. The charming court life at the Garden of the Tuileries in Paris. So this is about when you think about that retrograde time, a time to relax, to get grounded, to picture yourself in that beautiful garden. The Tuileries is a beautiful garden space that is very serene and so well taken care of. Get grounded, relax, enjoy nature, enjoy your environment really soak it up. I still feel that Taurian energy, which is alive right now. That's, we're in uh, Taurus times right at the moment. It's a time for reflection. It's a time for taking stock of what you have. Notice what you have, not what you don't have. All these retrogrades planets in all those areas of your life, and this will be specific um, depending on where these planets fall in your natal birth chart in terms of communication in what area of your life, in terms of um, taking action with the Mars energy in what area of your life, in terms of the Jupiter expanding in what area of life, uh, Saturn having discipline and structure in what area of life, and then Pluto total rebirth in what area of life. 
Okay, so um, there's just a lot to consider here. But I really want you, as we get into the reading, I want you to think about that beautiful garden in Paris. Imagine yourself, this is a place of where people of high integrity and significant means, it's the charmed life, it's very Torian. Um, it's the charmed life. It is the beauty in life. And again, it's taking that stock list for yourself, almost as if you were preparing for some sort of a challenge that's ahead. You were taking stock of all the things that are in your, in your pantry and knowing what you, what you have and what you want to go after when the energy becomes available. Because right now, the energy is just not there to like plow ahead. If you did, there's nothing wrong with that, but you don't have as much supportive go girl, go guy kind of energy behind you, pushing you, okay, propelling you forward. You will have that as these planets start to come out of retrograde, but it's going to be a while. Um, you know, it won't be till really end of June, particularly with Mars coming out of retrograde, that we really start to see some powerful forward momentum, okay? So it's a great time. Journal, meditate, sit outside on the beautiful days we will have coming up as we're here in spring at long last. Um, really think about, take stock of what you have and where do you want to go? It's just a great reflective point, okay? So the card readings that I will be doing next are all about the true north for you as you consider where you're at and where you want to go. What is that true north point for you that's going to keep you um, focused in the right direction, okay? What is going to make you a good mindset or sort of a pair of glasses that you would put on? What, what does that perception look like? It's sort of a lens that you're looking through in order to make these next moves as you're creating your stock list, all right, of what you have and where you want to go. Now's the time in all those areas of life I mentioned. Make your list, check it twice, and then it's like, boom, see it as done. But these cards are going to give you a lens to consider as you make those lists, okay? All right, and just as a review for those who may not have seen the cards, this was choice number one. You're looking at the back of the cards. This is choice number one. This is choice number two. And this is choice number three. So each, a reading for each card is coming up next. Okay, card number one. This is card number one. And this is again your true north when you're considering making your stock list, okay, is contract. Okay, I want you to take a close look at that for you because these are general readings I'm doing. Just notice what you notice about the card artwork or the term contract. Okay. Um, what this feels like, it's also the number six, this card. And six is very much about our material needs. It's about, um, uh, yeah, money. It's about our stability. The six, even the shape of it, the stability is on the bottom half. So it's like there's a foundation that's being created. I can definitely feel that. Um, this feels like it's about the lens through which you would look, the true north is about really thinking things through with a very discerning mode, I want to say. Um, the scales really draw me in this card, the, the image of the scales. It is about really weighing out your options. I'm going to encourage you with anything that you're considering when you think about particularly where you want to go is really weighing out the pros and the cons and actually making a list of pros and cons and see which one feels heavier because 
that's going to be important as you make decisions for moving forward in this very important nine year when we are cleaning up a lot of old items, making decisions that will help to propel us even further as we go into a one year next year, two plus zero plus one plus seven is 10, which reduces to a one. Um, this very much feels um, traditional. It feels like you are calling on your old wisdom. I'm looking at the books. Um, this is wisdom that sits within you because she doesn't have, she has her eyes blindfolded. So this is, the books are the wisdom that has long been held within you. Look at the aging of that contract behind her. Um, and the, it's really calling on your inner sense of right and wrong, integrity being of prime importance. I'm feeling the need to like really be articulate when I'm giving this message. Um, you really have to think about your options, okay? Please don't, for those who picked this card, don't rush into anything too heavily, quickly, without thinking it through. Because you might get started, but then it might not take off and really be at that slow burn that you want, i.e. the fire in the background is what I'm being called to. Um, you won't, you'll have a quick flame and then it will quickly go out or it will subside and you won't get the kind of heat from it that you're looking for. Um, you really have to think about it. But what I want to say is there is a tremendous amount of power behind the decisions that you do decide to make. Do you see the burning red in that fire behind me? That's the undercurrent. It's right there. So whatever you're wanting to create and how you're wanting to move forward, um, there's plenty of power. <laughs> there's plenty of power. And I want to say by July, August time frame, you're you're having much more energy available to you to make things move um, right in the heat of summer. Um, but boy, really just pay attention to the details and please keep your integrity at the highest level as you're making decisions, weighing out how does my head feel about this? How does my heart feel about this? And it's really got to be a combo of the two. Okay, because being all heart and, and heart, 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 heart is fine, but the mind does serve an important purpose for us. That's that Saturn energy. Um, that is very important as well because we are living on planet Earth. There are very practical needs that need to be met. This feels also very Taurian that's coming through. Taurus is very practical, stepwise progression. That's just being realistic, folks. And we do live on Earth, and we need to be realistic about how we set up our lives and to take steps to move forward because we're working with other humans and we're all at different levels of consciousness. No one better than another, but all forms of expression, all forms of different, different levels of awareness of who we are as divine beings, okay? So... I guess my message to you, your true north is about being practical and wise. You are so wise within you. It just sits there waiting for you to access it. You will know by how your body feels when you think about a scenario playing out as if it already has. How does it feel in your body? Does it give you a tummy ache and a headache? Or does it give you those wonderful butterflies of oh, if I only did this, wow, then I could go on to do that. And it feels like endless expansion, okay? You'll know the difference between those two feelings. That's what I mean by the wise portion of you living within. Use your body to help you make decisions about what is right for you and what isn't because only you know, okay, based on all of your past experiences in this life and others as well. Wow, that's going to be great. Just be practical, okay? Be practical. Make lists. Be organized. And above all else, always approach with the highest of integrity. 
For those that chose card number two, this is miracles. So again, this is a general reading. So please notice what you notice in the card. I'm going to zoom up a little bit. There's a lot of images there. It might be a little hard to see inside the tree image. So notice what you notice, because that's what's most important. So what I get a sense of, um, boy, in terms of your true north, I feel like um, the solar plexus and the sacral, the lower chakra set is very important as you make your stock list and make decisions as you reflect on life, make plans, um, rejuvenate yourself. It feels like the solar plexus, which is um, usually seen as yellow, the sacral is orange, and the, um, the root is red. I'm really just drawn to that center portion. I like don't even see anything else in this card. Um, it's like you really, activity is going to be important as you move through this retrograde time and you're making your, your lists and um, considering things, contemplating. This, your energy, uh, which is a little different from the first card, feels more like uh, contemplation as a true north, but really getting down in that inner child space, which is in the um, sacral area, which is just below your belly button. Um, this is, um, inner child is having a heck of a time during retrograde period for a lot of people. Um, he or she likes to pop up and, um, kind of have a little hissy fit about things like, oh, we don't have enough money and we can't do this. And like, a when I do sessions, I typically see the inner child as anywhere between like three to eight roughly. Um, but often they're three and four, three, yeah, even as, as young as two, but usually three to four years of age, right in that time when so much is being developed. And the inner child, I feel like, is, is having a little bit of a flare-up during retrograde because it is crazy chicken season. You know, chickens with their heads cut off sort of feeling. And that is very unsettling <laughs> to an inner child spirit. Um, we all carry an inner child. That is always, it's, a, it's such a gift within us. But to recognize and listen to that voice, and it often will be the voice of fear. Because you think about a three and four year old, and largely they lived their life in a state of wonder. But there can be situations when mom and dad disappear or whoever the guardian was in, the, in your life um, where they feel unsafe. And retrograde periods like this where it's so intense can start to feel a little um, scary for that inner child. So I would encourage you, and I'm sure that there's plenty of... Um, meditations on YouTube about getting in touch with the inner child. Um, but I would encourage you to go through a very simple process where you find even just 15 minutes and you can set the timer on your phone um, to close your eyes and to, I always like to imagine a feather because we're so busy in our minds. I like to imagine a very soft, in this case, I would say an orange feather, very soft and gentle and quite small. And imagine it drifting down from your brain space, like you've got your eyes closed and it's drifting all the way down into that sacral area. And I'm talking about an inch or so below your belly button. Okay. And when it touches down there, there's a perfect place for it to sit. And it's all this beautiful orange. You could almost imagine like a, a beautiful orange flower that uh, the petals are, are perfectly positioned for it to touch down there. 
and allow um, that energy of the divine through that feather to open to really um, amp up the energy through that flower base, if, if you will. And listen, ask the inner child to say something to you. What does he or she most want to say to you at this time as you're considering your next moves forward? Because I feel like the inner child has got something to say and that you may not get the kind of traction as the planets come out of retrograde. You may not get the kind of traction that you're hoping for unless you listen to that little one. And, and they just want to be heard. Like any child, you, any image of a child, a young child that you think of, you know, sometimes they'll get to the point of throwing a temper tantrum because they feel like they're not heard and not seen. And the inner child often suffers from that. So let's just give them a big hug and let them have the stage for a while. The retrograde period is a great time for that. And what is really quite magical is, is once you do that, this is what I'm, whoo, I just got really like this surge of energy went through my heart. Once the inner child has a voice, it's like you give the, give the kiddo the microphone and they get to have their say. The, the, everything gets lit up in those lower chakras and it just propels the energy up. Again, I'm being led to the fire. Um, there's, there was a reason I was supposed to be in front of the fire, even though my face is burning. Um, that energy of the lower chakra system for you that chose this card is important to embody at this time, to really rev it up. And the inner child is the keeper of that set the root, the sacral, and the solar plexus, kind of watching over that, whereas the higher self kind of watches over the upper chakra set. And once that kiddo has his or her say, this it just gets lit up. And then notice how the energy for the third eye is amplified and all of the blessings this of you know, your groundedness here on earth and pulling up the resources that you need to just blossom. I wish you could see closer. Um, in this tree image, um, there are many different images and it's like the possibilities are endless. Um, there, you can create whatever you're looking to create, but you need to start there in the lower chakra set through the voice of the inner child. That is your true north. The inner child wants to be the lens for you to really revisit something of what you're really wanting at a core level. What is it that that inner child, they're usually, it's usually around fear um, as to why the inner child starts to pop up. Um, and then once, once that has been addressed and acknowledged, you got your fire burning, baby. And you can then get the insight that you need. That's the eye at the top and the resources pulled up from wherever they need to come from, not just the earth, but there's a pulling up of whatever you need and look at the blossoming. But this, it's the inner child is so important here for you. Okay, so once you do that, boy, miraculous things can appear. So for you, your true north, for those that chose this card, is looking through the eyes of the child and allowing that wonder to appear once again in, by facing fears that could possibly be laying under the surface. Okay, for those that chose card number three, this is the back of the card. And you get my favorite animal. Well, perhaps besides the horse, I do love the horse, but you get the peacock. I just love this bird. The card itself says, let yourself stand out and be noticed. So I feel like as you're, as I mentioned in the intro, as you're thinking about making your stock list, you're taking stock of where you're at you're taking, making 
sort of a, a wonderment list, you're really putting yourself in the place of wonder. What I'm wanting to say is in the wonder column, the future that's not that far off, it's when these planets start going direct and Jupiter is going direct on May 10th. This card, for those that chose this one, Jupiter is going to be important for you because it's about expansion. That's what the peacock is all about. You cannot miss this bird when those feathers are expanded. Okay? So when you're creating your wonder list, I want to call it that for you. Um, you need to dream bigger. You need to set your sights higher. You need to think about there being many different approaches to the essence. Think about the core of what it is that you want to do, what it is you want to create. I'm also going to say this bird is very, um, very uh, tied to abundance. And so as you're thinking about creating abundance, those um, patterns in the in the feathers are like eyes and what I want to say is that there are many different people that you can partner with there are many different sets of eyeballs <laughs> that will engage with you in some way shape or form but it feels like there's many options and that many can play out at once you know where don't limit yourself to one pathway like walking down one corridor and you're only going to go through that door at the end along your corridor for those that chose this card there's many possible doorways and i'm encouraging you as you go along to oop, i'm going to look in here and what jewel could i pick out of there to take with me stick it in your backpack go on to the next door it's a room that looks totally different has totally different jewels in it and you pick through and decide what you want and you take what you want that's what it feels like and then as you do that you know as you're making your list as you're really thinking about what you're wanting just al allow yourself as these planets particularly Jupiter feels like your partner um, as you're as you're the planets come out of retrograde that energy starts helping you out to form what you have specified um, really allow yourself to try some stuff and get out there don't be afraid to be seen I'm going to share that I was very afraid to do these videos I hate looking at myself on video I hate hearing my own voice I just don't like it I never have um, but there's something that I just felt compelled that I had to do it and hopefully it's helpful to everybody but I still even if nobody responds to me I still feel compelled to do it and so notice those areas of your life there's something in your wonderment list I don't know why I want to call it that but that's what I want to call it for you um, there's something in that beautiful list of the future state which is not far away. This is when these plants go direct um, that wants to be seen broader. I mean, look at, all you have to do is, is literally think of, I want you to think about a peacock and that, that process of the spreading out of the feathers. You are beautiful. And as you're considering what you want, and you're looking in each of those doorways when you go down that hallway those jewels are going they're within you but you're just like turning them on so that we can all see the color okay and as you do that I, I mean the beauty that you will create will be so unique but so necessary and it's it their key is really trying to make yourself seen you you can't hide from this anymore you can't you you have to step up and you have to allow yourself to really go into the spotlight get on the stage write the words say the words 
write the music, uh, create the art, um, create the project. There is a creation aspect here that feels very important for you. And you are just forming it right now. And uh, I'm going to encourage you to continue that, but to, to see yourself more front and center. Don't put yourself back behind the curtain because you're gathering all the jewels up so you can come out and show them to all of us just like the peacock feathers, okay? So you really need to think in those terms of how can you really bring that gift forward in a more public forum of some sort, in a, in a way that people can see you because they need to see you, all right? so. For you that picked this card, I feel like your true north is in, particularly as you think about the list of what it is you're wanting to create. How can I go bigger or how can I be more public or how can I, how can I be seen with what I want to create? Okay. Um, there, it's, it's, there's a creation aspect to what you're doing and it's very important that other people be able to benefit from it. You can't do this, well, you can do this as a closet sort of a passion, but you have the special sauce that people need to taste, you know? You, you have something that's so unique that needs to be brought forward and it can only be brought forward because of how you're encoded. You know, other birds don't have this. So you're a rare bird. And you're not one of the crazy chickens running around. You're somebody who can ground those energies and take the best of the best. And with your integrity intact and that head held high, you think about a very proud peacock you can display what it is that you have to display that's very unique and, it, and the world needs it. I feel very called to say that to you. Um, so really think about that. Think about your true north being, how can I dream bigger? How can I dream more broadly? How can I bring what it is that I'm wanting to create in a way that will end up benefiting many people by them just seeing it or experiencing what I'm wanting to create, okay? So with that, thank you for tuning into this long video this week and I hope it's helpful. Uh, we have new moon coming up later on this week so I'll post something about that. As always, I do offer my new, new moon readings each month if you wish to purchase one. And, but I will put up um, a theme for us to all think about for this new moon to set our intentions. Um, and I might possibly do it as a card reading, we'll see. So until then, really enjoy this retrograde. I love retrogrades. This is, we got like kind of a breather in order to take stock, that feels important, and to set our intention for what it is we're wanting to create in the not too distant future. So have a great week ahead.